Hi everyone, Nipkex here and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm and the Road to Grandmaster. Hit a bit of a hitch at the moment, have had a couple of not that good games um, where we have gone down, we didn't make our promo to Diamond 1 unfortunately, but we are continuing to climb. Uh, Asmo Dunk, who was the Rhaegar in our previous game, is uh, now on the enemy team. So I'm saying, well hey, one, one of us has got to win this time, right? One of us has got to win. Um, <clears throat> also, I have been, of course, reading every single comment, as I always do, uh, on the previous videos. I'm recording this commentary literally right before I, I put this video together and upload it. So uh, I probably received most of that feedback already. Um, so something I want to do in this video is uh, take a bit of a more positive attitude. Um, I think people were... Uh, uh, I don't think it's necessarily always wrong to be very critical of other stuff, and I think, you know, that's just going to be the nature of these videos. It's like I said at the start of the season, wanted to climb quickly so that we would stay on par. Uh, hasn't been the case. Uh, you can see that now. We've got a huge personal adjustment. We're team captain every game. It does get a bit frustrating. The enemy team actually neglecting to ban anything, which is bizarre. We're going to get rid of Thrall. Uh, we want to take Ragnaros. We're not going to be taking Thrall ourselves. Uh, and Thrall's really good, so we just get rid of him. Let me team grab Sylvanas, that's the first pick, kind of interesting. Uh, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think I've gotten then, kind of developed a negative mindset, which I was aware what could very well happen and very easily happen, uh, but I still let it happen anyway. So I'm gonna try consciously to improve that in this game. Uh, that did cheer me up in this draft, as a dunk saying, the Flame Wars already started over on his team. I mean, team captain not banning is not entirely surprising. Uh, and Sylvanas, I would say, is not the, the best uh, pick in this particular map either. She's okay, but not overwhelmingly good by any means. Uh, like, the paralysis kind of overlaps with what the terror does, so it's not super ideal. Um, <clears throat> we grabbed Ragnaros and Zul'jin to start it off. I think that's fine. You know, I probably would have preferred to pick a warrior up early, but it doesn't matter too much. Big fan of Ragnaros at the moment. I think he's really, really good. Um, and uh, yeah, Zildjian, he's okay. <laughs> he's okay. You know, like Tychus would be better, just straight up better, I think, in this case. But Zildjian's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Enemy team grabs Dehaka. I think that's a very good choice. And they grab Lunara as well. Bit unusual, but I like it. I have to say I do like it. I think Lunara is definitely an underrated hero. I love her. I think she's great. Uh, I'm trying going to be trying to pick Diablo here. We obviously need a warrior and a support. I prefer to play warrior. Haven't had much fun playing support recently, so I wanted a break from that. Just uh, get over the tilt by just avoiding that, doing something different. Uh, I'm going to remove Oriel away from the enemy team. Um, it's a pretty nice situation for us to do this. Both teams need a support. We get first choice of the supports. So we can remove Oriel, who combos incredibly well with Lunara. Uh, just remove that from the table. And then, you know, they basically get forced to potentially remove uh, one of the powerful supports. And that's exactly what they do. Uh, they're left up saying, oh, they've got first choice of supports. They've removed probably the, the best sort of like second choice support from our team. Uh... We probably want to ban out one of the other ones. Difficult situation for them. Our teammate here, Hovering, Brightwing, or Malfurion. I actually I, I actually like both choices a lot. Um They've got quite sort of slow damage at the moment and, and spread and stuff like that. So I think Brightwing is quite nice for that. Um, you know, po she could potentially polymorph uh Dehaka out of stuff too. So I do like both choices. The enemy team still have left to pick their healer. Potentially another warrior. Uh, it would probably be a good idea. I think the Oriel ban here is really crucial. Uh, a, uh, an Oriel empowered by Lunara is so strong. And if you look at our team, we're going to have the Vikings running around. Uh, we're going to have Diablo Ragnaros. We've got these slow heroes that Lunara can kite quite effectively and turn out a lot of damage on. She's going to be pretty safe in this particular game with the comp we have, if we have her being safe, being able to do all this damage and giving all that energy to Oriel, I just, I wouldn't want to face that, no way. Um, she actually grabs, we grab Malf, which I think is really good for them. Uh, you can see where they banned out Rhaegar, by the way, you know, Rhaegar with Sulji and Ragnaros, and they're, they did not know, of course, we were going to go with uh, the Lost Vikings. So we could have run something like, I don't know, let's say Zarya, Zarya would work really well. And also works well with Bloodlust. So it could have been a pretty scary thing for them. So good choice. Good choice. Um, 
to bound away Rhaegar. They got Malf, which they're perfectly happy with. Honestly, perfectly happy with. Um, and then uh, Muradin to finish it off. So they will go for that sort of extra tanky front line. I think that's fine. Uh, was Artanis still open? Might have gone for Artanis myself over Muradin here. I don't know. I, I guess it doesn't really matter. They've got, you know, Lunara, who is a hyper carry. Dahaka does a ton of damage as well. They're pretty happy, actually, to play a fairly defensive game. Muradin brings slows. He brings stones. It's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, no, I like the Muradin pick. I do. Um, we got the Lost Vikings <laughs> in the ideal position to get them. Last pick where they can counter. Admittedly, they do have Sylvanas and Dahaka. They've already sort of naturally built a counter. But it should hopefully not be anything that we're... Hopefully, we should be able to deal with it. So I'm trying to say here. Level one talents, kind of interesting choices here. Life leech is kind of appealing against a hack of Muradin, but I just I'm not actually sure if the talent is good. I haven't seen anyone run it. Uh, Bulwark would not be bad, but like I said, they're fairly slow, consistent damage, so there's not like a ton of burst of you preventing. I think I do decide to pick up Devil's Dew here in this particular game. Um, we have a very large health bar, uh, Diablo. I don't know what I just said. I just said that name very strangely. I kind of choked halfway through, <laughs> knowing I pronounced it wrong. Um, Ragnaros is AFK, so this is a big problem. Um, but just sorry, Diablo has a really, really big health bar. It's going to be very difficult for Brightwing to actually heal that up. So Devil's Dew will help us heal up our health more effectively than the, the Brightwing, who has no single target, uh, no single target kind of like focused healing whatsoever. Uh, also, there's loads of reach cloaks on this map, so this talent should actually be really good here. I think it should be really good. I might even just pick it in general, even without a Brightwing. You see, I'm roaming around just trying to keep an eye on this Sylvanas. Uh, the level 1's got... Luckily, they didn't do anything level 1, the enemy team, which is really useful, really helpful for us. And um, then... Um, catch Mal, flip him back. He does get Polymorph. Looks like he should be taken out, and he does get taken out. That worked pretty well. We're just going to stick near to this Brightwing. Try to zone these guys out with a W. Nicely done. We're all very happy with that. Get a kill right at the start, and pop our Devil's Dew eating fountain, and get ready to go into this. Ragnos gets some damage down Lunara. Not too shabby, and we're pushing in. This is a typical Viking strat, as you group usually about four people in one lane, uh, you can rotate around, normally try to focus on a side lane, make it difficult for the enemy team to get there, and the Vikings just soak and absorb the XP in the other lanes in the meantime. Now, two Vikings are currently dead, so we're going to have to kind of rotate around and make some stuff happen if we can at this point. So, Jin's very low on life, but he should be doing a lot of damage here. All right, he could have done a couple of extra basic attacks there instead of trying to run away. It doesn't matter too much, though. He killed him off Furion regardless, just about, just about. And a nice steal by Brightwing. She grabs all those camps. I'm trying to steer near, uh, stick near to my teammates, but Murden does jump on top of me. At this point, I know I'm dead. I'm just trying to do what I can to escape uh, in this situation. You know, uh, ran towards Savannah, tried to scare her away, then cue back to the Murden in order to try to create some distance and open it up. Didn't work. We got collapsed upon. We got killed. And then just tried to die as gracefully as possible. Um, just doing as much damage as we could as we, we bit the durst. Bit the, bit the durst, bit the durst. I can't speak today. This is the first video I'm recording today, the first commentary. So um, it, it could be a little bit messy, I suppose. Level four, we got some interesting choices. I decided to grab, four, I think it's from the shadows, is that was called? I didn't quite catch there. Uh, and I, because it's the first game of the day, of course, I forgot to open the talent calculator. <laughs> but uh, it's going to increase the uh, charge distance of our Q, more mobility in the team fights, better ganks, and will also um, improve the stun if we do hit someone into a wall. Uh, that was a pretty good situation there. Nice work, though, by the... Ah, oh, beautiful heal by Mouth, but it's not enough. He does go down. Actually, the Fire Stomp there, finish, uh, finishing off that kill. Um, but yeah, that, that worked pretty well. You can see I'm, I'm baiting out the Lunara's level 1 talent. She's got Natural Perspective, so when there is Poison on me, she will um, have Vision of me. So what I did, knowing that I had the Vision on, again, you can see that big red eye above me, I just baited it out. I made it seem like, oh, low health to hacker. I'm retreating back to my base. Mwahaha. Uh, that was a good, uh, it was a good move to do that and bait her out. She did not at all expect me to be there. She was actually just running up, probably looking at her minimap or something. And we actually got some good damage on her. Almost killed her. Flip Murden back into the stun, which is somewhat useful. We get caught in a nice route. Use our Q to dash out once again. Sylvanas goes super deep after us. Well, hey, if you're going to go with that deep, I'm just going to turn around, smack you in the face, and we take Sylvanas out. Sylvanas is down. Uh, Eric, the lost Viking, is in the middle of that place, doing what he can to try to steal some, uh, some coins. Uh, 
We knock Muradin back once again, getting that resistant from our Q, helping us to survive. Uh, not looking too good here for uh, poor old Zul'jin. Brightwing doing her best to try to keep him alive with the heals. I think he just about survived. Yeah, he did. Just about survived. Brightwing is here healing us up. We don't have a well for a very long time, but we've got plenty of health. Gonna grab Soul Shield at level 7. Just protect us from that Lunara damage as much as possible. And of course the Dehaka damage. And Sylvanas, they've got a lot of ability damage. Uh, this thing is almost dead. We could probably take this out. Dehaka, not here. So this is a fairly good opportunity. We do unfortunately get rooted. The slows from the Murden being uh, a pretty big problem for us. Trying to knock this Dehaka away. Just slow him down. Get him out of position as much as possible. We're trying to zone out the enemy team now. Brightwing running away. Maybe has enough health, uh, health to survive. As <laughs> Asma Dunks does go down on the Murden. Nice work by the Zul'jin. Finishes that off. Unfortunately, Brightwing goes down to the poison. Oh, and Rakros goes down to the poison as well. That was a really, really close team fight. Uh, very back and forth. Uh, just sort of the slimmest of margins. We lost that and lost a few heroes, which does suck. It does suck. A bit of bad luck. Good play, I think, all around from everyone, for the most part, in that team fight. It's just the way she goes. Hey, it's always nice when you, you know, lose a big team fight that uh, you win uh, <laughs> a freebie is your merc camp AFK pushing the lane kills Sunara. happy days that's a pretty good thing to happen can't complain about that too much we get stunned by murder and we get stunned by the big dude we are taking some damage but you can see Diablo's tankiness plus some of these bright wing heals we're not too worried about this at all Nice work by Olaf coming in here, trying to make stuff happen. Looking for the Q against that left-hand wall against the Murden. It was a good dwarf toss to get out, though. We start turning around and working on the terror, but notice our teammates are looking for a pick up on this top lane. We rotate up and uh, get some nice damage down. Actually, Brightwing a little bit out of position. Now we're going to collapse and try to protect her from this damage. The enemy team is moving in, so we're going to retreat around, try to get in a good position for a Q. Get a Q against the Murden. He is actually going fairly low. We try to flip him over with overpower, but we do get stunned, and it doesn't activate in the end. Now, backing away. We do have our fountain available, so that's good. Actually going to grab that immediately. Uh, Ragnaros going into the fort. Wanted to stun the uh, Sylvanas, but it was an excellent storm bolt from the Murden. I have to say, the Murden, as we in this game, uh, he had really, really good storm bolts. Beautiful cleanse comes out from the Malfurion. Uh, cleansing him out of that Ragnaros damage, out of my stun, really brutal. And then, ah, oh, just the most painful CC combo. We got stuck with the slow in that Garden Terror thing once again. Slows have been the bane of our existence on this particular map. Um, and we get focused down, we get exploded, we get silenced, we get stunned, everything hits us, we don't even get to activate Apocalypse before we die, which is a really big problem, and that's going to make us lose this team fight overall. Uh, the fight is going down, Zul'jin is dead, Ragnaros looks like he's dead as well, we're just going to throw out the Apocalypse here, bit of a panic, try to help uh, Ragnaros escape, so at least we'd have that going for us. Looks like he actually will escape healing and support from Brightwing as well, uh, 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 and a Q heal from him too. Uh, and he does make it out just barely. Ooh, he actually almost went down there. To, I think it was Sylvanas' attack. So in the end, I suppose the Apocalypse was maybe just about worth it. We'll be on cooldown now, unfortunately. And that sucks. The enemy team does get plant, which super sucks. And the Vikings escape with play again. That's kind of funny. Sylvanas activates our camp for us with the bounce of her poison uh, dagger, her shadow dagger. And we decide, hey, what the heck? We're here. We've got Zul'jin here. we got Brightwing here. we got Diablo here. We can take this camp nice and quick. Zul'jin misses all the Ws. Know that feel, bro. Know that feel. And we get ourselves a bruiser camp. That's actually pretty nice. And it's in a really good position as well. They're focusing their attention on the bottom half of the map. There's a bruiser camp pushing top. This is huge. Looking for the flip on Lunara, but the goddamn hoppy thing is too fast and she gets away. There's one single seed still left there. I want to defend against this terror. That's something to definitely watch out for. Uh, Zul'jin, though, is looking to get some damage down in the mid lane. So we're going to back him up and then rotate down. Actually, looks like the enemy team may be overextending here. Zul'jin is sort of in position. Nice wisp from Lunara actually spots that out. Going to just pop a W just because. We've got tons of mana. It's a short cooldown. It's not actually going to matter too much. And we're going to rotate down towards this bottom lane. Enemy team is looking to engage here and make something happen. It's Muradin in the terror. We're going to back off. We're actually going to grab this healing fountain. That's going to heal us up loads through all of this. We've got 100 souls right now. So that level 1 soul fees talent is getting so, so much value. This is not too good. Trying to do what we can. We do stun Sylvanas. Get her out of there. And works pretty nice. So we flip 
Uh, good apocalypse this time around. Flip Lunara back into it. Ensure that it lands. Uh, Sylvanas looks like she's going to walk away with a sliver of HP. Zul'jin goes down before he's able to activate Tastingo, I do believe. Uh, but we do pick up two kills overall, so that's fin uh, pretty fantastic. Brightwing and Hearthstone out, and does teleport back in. We're looking for a pick now onto Asmodunk. That's slow. Once again, the bane of our life. We get a good stun. Flip him back over. We're doing as much as we can. Hit him with the W as well. He does Dwarf Toss out, but some good damage. That's his health fairly low. And we'll be able to take that. And this is a really good opportunity. They've got two dead heroes. And we know their Murden is very low. Sylvanas has gone up top. to Hacka is pushing in top as well. This is a great opportunity to push in aggressively and steal their siege camps. Remove them from the enemy team. We can see the Vikings actually stole one up top as well. This is a beautiful opportunity for us to make something happen. We grab the siege camp. Murden does arrive, but he is too late. Flip him over. Getting some good damage down to Hacka is arriving. Lunara arrives as well. Brightwing teleports in, but it's far too late, and that is a dead Ragnaros. Ragnaros says GG because he's a lovely person. At uh, this stage, you can see, once again, I know I'm dead here. I know I'm dead, so like I was saying before, trying to die as gracefully as possible. Uh, as you saw, we, we did most of Lunara's health bar and damage. You know, it's going to take a couple of Qs from Alpha to heal her back up. You know, they'll be able to do it fairly easily, but, you know, it's those little things, you know, realize you're dead and try to do it as much as possible. What went wrong with that Siege Camp steal is that Brightwing should have been there. Um, probably should have been there from the start. You know, like, sure, the, the map positioning was very favorable for us. Um, so potentially she could have gotten away with uh, with soaking the bottom lane. However, at the same... I, I mean, it was very close, so I can kind of understand that. However, at the same time, I would honestly just prefer to steal that Siege Camp as quickly as possible. It opens up the potential of taking the Bruiser Camp. Nice as the Fury Smash finishes off that kill. That's a really big deal. And this is a really good opportunity here to go up and steal this camp away too. Uh, very important to steal these small Siege Camps as much as possible. We catch Sylvanas here in the enemy one. Maybe we should have saved that E to try to uh, just interrupt her and stop her from using her wave. Uh, teammates way too slow to come up, in particular Ragnaros, that is. Brightwing, I think, phase shift is not active, so he's not able to use that. I have to use Apocalypse, because this is like an awkward team fight for us. Hopefully that would set something up and we'd be able to get a kill. Uh, you can see I'm kind of annoyed at this stage. Uh, kind of annoyed at this stage. Um, I think it's important to note as well that part of what has me grumpy is that in the previous game, the exact same thing happened, where I was pinging stuff, people didn't come to the ping and then die because of it and end up being really bad. So it's kind of getting frustrated. Uh, over the course of multiple games that I was trying to shot call. Not trying to shot call, I was shot calling and people weren't listening. Uh, so yeah, you can see less times than GG more time playing. I'm, I'm very, I'm quite grumpy at this stage. Uh, and I, I do hold myself up to the same standards I would hold up other people. So if you're saying, well, Nupkex, you report people for abusive chat, and you, then you say that, well, yeah, sure. If they reported me for abusive chat in this game, I think they're well within their rights. Um, I think that would make perfect sense. Um, so there you go. Brightwing is giving me a stern talking to, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I was being a bit of a dick in this game. Uh, I think it's understandable frustration to some degree, but then I also shouldn't be saying it. And like I said, you know, if, if you know, the uh, Ragnaros turned around and reported me for abusive chat. I wouldn't be too mad at him. Uh, looking to get a Q on that to hack it. That's going to be a really good position to team fight. Full team fight. And we've got Vikings in the terror. We would win. Unfortunately, we did not quite get the Q against the wall with the hack. I got kind of unlucky, so we don't get that nice pick. Trying to zone out this Lunara. Try to keep that Brightwing alive. Notice these guys are way out of position. We're going to be able to take him down. Flip the Sylvanas back in. We've got uh, Ragnaros actually arrives here as well. But we had Zildjian here too. Brightwing goes down. It's very angry. I think it's one of those kind of funny situations, right? Where it's... Um, I haven't actually seen that too much recently. Not much in Diamond, really, but it's like a situation where you're, you're more frustrated at the personal uh, problem, like your, your personal death, than you are at at the overall picture. So, for example, right there, yeah, Brightwing died, but we got two kills in return. So it's a really good trade for us, actually. But Brightwing is frustrated because it's Brightwing who's dying. <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. Um, which I would say is a general rule, you know, uh, when you get kills on an enemy team, you want to look for taking a siege camp, uh, a merc camp kind of aggressively is often a pretty good thing to do, or take a structure aggressively. Um, so, you know, when that happens, you should be looking to do it. I think Brightwing should have been there uh, at that siege camp earlier. Uh, and then, of course, you know, when the enemy team was rotating in, she should have been teleporting in too. It's just, when you've got a global like that, you know, 
killing a, a, a mini wave is really easy. You don't need to pay attention. Now, this is interesting here, and you're going to see more kind of rage and lack of communication, I think. And this is because of a bug. Look at the top left, right? Do we see any death timers? Uh-uh. But I only realized this when I watched the replay. Uh, Brightwing is going nuts. She's like, what is this big noob doing? And she's right. Murden is dead right now. Murden has about a 40-second death timer. But... I'm doing the wrong thing. Like I just mentioned earlier, when you know an enemy hero is dead, when you've got that advantage, you should be looking to push in aggressively and do something. We should have been... I should have been there taking the siege camp, taking the bruiser camp, pushing down structures, doing something aggressive, utilizing that dead uh, Murden thing. Now, of course, the problem here, as you see, is that the Murden death timer is just bugged. It just hasn't displayed. Uh, obviously, we saw Murden died, but I kind of forgot that. You just you check the death timers at the top. It's just the way it happens. So I was completely unaware that Murden was dead. I thought he was still alive, which is hilarious and unfortunate. Um, but anyway, the Brightwing is kind of raging at me somewhat. Uh, I, I think she's correct. I think, you know, you don't expect a bug in that sense. I don't think, you know, I think spamming is just annoying as fuck. <laughs> I think it's annoying as fuck, but whatever. Uh, but anyway, I was just kind of throwing out an olive branch there as well. I was saying, hey, look, I'm not tilting. Um, and then, you know, teammates did a good thing, say, well played. So just, you know, throwing out the well played, bit of an olive branch, uh, olive branch saying, bit of a peace offering saying, you know, well, well done, you guys did good. Proof, hey, look, you see, seriously, not tilted. This is a small thing, but it can make a bit of a difference. And we do have level 20 here, so this would be a fairly decent time to, to potentially force a fight. Look for that force on the Lunara. It doesn't really work out. Uh, not very good at the old Hellgate combo, unfortunately. Our team do move forwards uh, well. So even though it was not uh, by any means, by any means a, a, a smooth... Um, use of uh, that Hellgate initiate. It still works out. Sylvanas screws up herself, which is really nice. Uh, Lunara died somewhere as well. Uh, and this is probably going to be game. We get a flip on to Haka and then beautiful position to cue him against uh, the core. He goes down. Uh, ad adaptation not in time to save him. Looking to pressure this Malph off as well, but at this stage, you know, he's just going down. We've got catapults here as well. Knock Malph back. Get a kill just for fun. Actually, almost screw up the team because, in some way because we uh, put him in a beautiful Twilight Dream position. But anyway, GG. Well played by the team. <laughs> Less typing, more win. I would actually say, out of all the people who typed, Trade Brightwing typed the most. Well, maybe I did. And uh, mine was less constructive. But oh well. It's definitely something that's getting a bit frustrated, uh, for sure, like just in general. Not too frustrated though, but a little bit of, just kind of tired of, of shot calling and then not having the people follow it. Um, but it was, it was a close game, as I said right there, it was a close game, pretty back and forth, it could have gone either way, I think, uh, and there were good plays and moves overall. And cool to see, you know, uh, playing with the Lost Vikings. I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I suppose the main point to reiterate here is, or one of the main things we learned in this is, you know, when you have an advantage, group up, push forwards, and, and act on that advantage. You know, for example, when we had that opportunity earlier to take that, the, the siege camp or the cruiser camp. Brightwing should have been there with us because it's a risky move to try to steal, uh, steal that stuff, especially early in the game when the death timers are low. Uh, you should kind of go and do that as quickly as possible and then go and do other stuff. Generally speaking, that's what you want to do. Uh, Brightwing figured and was not too far off in her estimation that we could probably take it as two. But if we're doing that, I mean, she should just like be just attack move towards the enemy structures and then just like keep panning her camera over towards us. She should be fully aware of what's going on. It was way too slow in the teleport up to the Tychus. It needs to be quick on that. You know, it's that's pretty much the main point of focus when you are a global hero, like a support, like Brightwing. Um, and your teammates are, are doing an aggressive invade of the enemy uh, merc camps. Um, that's where your attention absolutely 100% should be. So you should be quicker. You really should be quicker. Uh, and then we saw the same thing with, you know, you ought to be aggressively taking merc camps later with us. Um, and just a really unfortunate thing where just a, a bug within the game, the death timer not displaying correctly, uh, led to a lot of kind of uh, miscommunication within the team. Uh, and like, certainly I was, if Murden had been alive, I was doing the right thing. That's what I thought and that's why I was doing it. So uh, from the information that the game was giving me, that quick glance up to the top thing, um, I was doing but the correct call, uh, but of course, uh, there was that slight bug, so in fact, what I was doing was the wrong call. Should have been pushing in and stealing the enemy merc camps. Um, no, 
shit happens sometimes shit happens um hopefully they fix that bug soon so we don't have to deal with it again but oh well uh that was um this game hopefully it was a bit more positive in this one a bit more constructive talking a bit more about stuff that's going on i don't know let me know if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you did and i'll see you all next time for more heroes of the storm Bye bye